When you talk about Brenda Freeze, we're gonna to talk to Brenda first. You talk about Brenda Freeze, and it would take probably a half an hour to give her a proper introduction because of all she has done for Maryland women's basketball. Basically put the baby up on the map and kept it on the map, but not only championships in the conference, but that national championship we had a couple of years ago when the team went 34 and four. And the first time they got to the final four, they win it, and they win the national championship. Would you welcome, please, our women's head basketball coach, Brenda Freeze. Debbie Yao, who sold me with the vision of, you know, the ability to one day, you know, get to a Final Four, win a national championship, the, the ability to recruit, you know, at a high level. And um, it really was her, because if it wasn't her vision and uh, to kind of, you know, really, you know, sway me in that direction, I mean, it, it was a huge piece for, for me coming to Maryland. But you have to have the players, you have to have the connection. And I'm sure in your coaching career, things have changed with a coach and a athlete, student athletes relationship. Yeah, you know, things have really changed. <laughs> um, you know, I'll say when I first came here and, you know, again, growing up in the Midwest, I was pretty green, you know, to what it looked like. I remember when I first got here to Maryland and all of a sudden I'm going head to head with, uh, you know, recruiting with Pat Summit and Gina Wariyama. And, uh, whew, you talk about growing up quickly, you know, and then I think I learned out of that, like, man, I'm, I'm really competitive, you know, I want to win, so let's go. And, you know, obviously four years later, we're winning a national championship. But, you know, as things <laughs> go on, I mean, uh, I think you can all see, you know, as we evolve, I mean, the, the landscape has changed, you know, recruiting is, is not the same like it once was, and you have to be able to adapt to, you know, things like, you know, transfer portal, NIL, and, uh, you know, it's our, our new reality. I never thought I would I would see it, uh, you know, but here we are, and, and now you have to adapt to it. Ten newcomers coming in this year. A lot of transfer. Nine, don't put it at ten. <laughs> <laughs> you hope it's ten. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'll, I'll say, and you make a great point there, Johnny, that, you know, two years ago, when I was named Coach of the Year, you know, we had an influx, and we brought in Chloe, Bibby, and Katie Benson. And we had graduated five seniors and had some transfers, and it was the biggest, you know, it was another huge turnaround, in, and those two were really influ influential in coming in. So um, change doesn't scare me, if anything. You know, I'm excited. You know, this group, you know, brings a lot of, you know, new energy and passion, and, you know, we have four freshmen. We have um, five upperclassmen. When you talk about those nine, there are going to be a, a lot of new faces for you guys to learn, names and numbers. and. Um, but they're great kids. They're great human beings. They've been grinding all summer, and um, they're, they're going to play the right way. And so I think that's what our staff is really excited about is just, you know, the, the talent that we have, you know, and Abby Myers from Maryland, who was Ivy League Player of the Year and, you know, could have went and left it and gone to the WNBA and is coming back. And um, Diamond Miller is finally healthy, and she's been here for four years, and Lavender Briggs. Um, coming from Florida, you know, so there, there's going to be a lot of um, new talent, but but really, really talented kids that, that are coming. You know, I mean, we're Maryland. 535 wins at Maryland for Coach Freeze. A total of 592 in 21. <laughs> well, as you look for the upcoming season, do you, do you have any projections among the team that you'll say, okay, this is our win goal, or just let them come one game at a time. Yeah, you know, I've never been that type of coach that, you know, with a win goal. You know, I think what you do every single day defines that. Sure. And so, you know, my big picture is, you know, March. I want to be peaking by March. And so we don't get to, you know, high or low, you know, in the wins and the losses in between. It's just are we making the right steps to, you know, one, secure, you know, the ability to be able to host at home. So. The best fans of the country can be there, you know, to, to be able to have that opportunity, and then um, to be peaking in March. I mean, that, that's where it's at. So, you know, that's where our focus lies. What's the best thing about being a coach in Maryland? Marquee job. Uh, the best, the best part, uh, you know, you know, I think 
obviously I love to compete, you know, the, the, the games, you know, when you have those high level games and your fans there, you know, you know, are phenomenal. And then the players, you know, the, it's the players that, um, you know, you get to coach and be around every single day. Um, I think I have the best classroom, you know, out there is, you, you know, you get to be with them every single day during the season and have an impact on their lives. When, uh, when Kevin Willard was announced as the Maryland head basketball coach some months ago, back in March, uh, everybody kind of knew that coach was coming from Seton Hall. He had a tremendous, tremendous job at Seton Hall, turning that program into one that really wasn't relevant before he got there and made it one of the best programs in the country. Had some outstanding players that he coached over the years, and it had to be also difficult as with, with Coach Breeze to leave a school where he'd been so successful for 12 years. Welcome, Coach Kevin Wilk. He you would not leave Seton Hall unless it was the right job. And this is one of the top jobs in the country here in Maryland. Yeah, absolutely. I think I was, I forget who I was talking to about, but, you know, I can always kind of peg who's going to get fired and who's going to do well in jobs. And <laughs> no, I, I, I really mean it. It's, it's not difficult. You really have to kind of, you know, you just don't take any job. You know, this is my livelihood. You know, just don't take any job and all of a sudden you're fired and all of a sudden you're sitting there looking at your wife and kids saying, well, I need to go back to work. Um, you know, you have to fit, you have to find a job that fits your personality, that fits your culture, that, that has a belief system, that has a culture that you believe in, that you have. Uh, and there's a lot of guys that just take jobs. I got offered a couple of jobs that just wasn't in my DNA, it wasn't what I was about, wasn't what I thought I could build into what Brenda has done, you know, into a championship program, to what Gary had done. Um, and so when Maryland came open, you know, I had I knew the history, I, I've known the history, being so so close to where I grew up, where I was, being such a basketball fan. Um, you know, you, you really, when you take a job, you really have to look at it as, and can I be successful there? Sure. You know, or is this a place where, you know, in four years, you're fired? And mm -hmm. it's a it's a big move because Seton Hall, I had turned Seton Hall into my DNA. Um, it wasn't my DNA when I got it. I learned that lesson very quickly. Um, but the University of Maryland is a special place. The, the program is a special place. The fan base is a very, very passionate fan base, which I love. Um, and when this job came open, um, this is something that I said, I just don't think you can pass up because it has everything that I think we can be successful, uh, and at the same time, it matches what I want my program to be. Let's talk about that step, because you got guys with local ties that are tremendous recruiters. Yeah, I think, I, you know, I made a mistake when I first got the Seton Hall job, is, you know, I, I was like, I'm gonna have one Jersey guy, I'm gonna have one West Coast guy, I'm gonna have one Southern guy, and we're gonna recruit everywhere. And then very quickly, I was like, I'm not recruiting anyway. Um, <laughs> So I knew coming into this job very, very, I, I said, I need a staff that knows this area, that understands this area, um, that can help me. I knew the area because I, I've recruited here for the last 10 years, but it's not the same. You know, I go three hours back up to Jersey to come back down. I wanted some, I wanted, I wanted at least two guys that really, really knew this area. Um, and I wasn't going to make that mistake again, so I hired two great guys, someone I hired at Seton Hall, uh, someone I respected, David Cox, um, for years and years. Uh, I brought Grant Bill Meyer with me, who knew my system, which was very important, uh, one of the best big guy coaches in the country. Um, kept Chris Robinson, um, you know, kept a couple guys, Greg Manning on staff, that uh, I just thought had my uh, vision, my work ethic, my culture, uh, that I respected very much. And I put a staff together that would complement and be beneficial for every player that we got. And I think, uh, you know, we've done, they've done a, an unbelievable job in the first four months. How much of an influence on your coaching career was your dad? You played at Western Kentucky when Ralph Wilder was there, and you went on to finish up at Pittsburgh. Uh, but I would, is that when you started to get the idea, hey, look what my dad does, look what he's, or maybe not. <laughs> no, I was going into the oil business. Um, 
had a, you know, I had a job for with a natural gas company, getting ready to come out of college. I was done. I'm like, this guy sucks. Um, <laughs> he yelled at me, took me out of the game when I turned it over. I'm like, man, this coaching sucks. My dad and I, I love my dad. He's one of the greatest coaches of all time. But when you play for your father, you better be the best player. You better be the worst player. You better not be right in the middle. Because if you're right in the middle, you suck. Um, yeah, so I'm like, right in the middle. That's that's it. that that is the greatest compliment that someone could give me. That we're gonna be like Coach Williams. I think there's only one Coach Williams. That, um, he is a Hall of Famer. He is a tremendous coach. A tremendous. Uh, Grievous Vasquez came over to the to the facility the other day, um, and he was just he got the tears when he started talking about Coach Williams, and what the impact on his life had, what he did. And, you know, that's our goal. You know, we, we we're gonna play a lot like um, I think I think my system and the way we play is very similar to how Coach Williams played. Um and my guess. Let's talk about this year's team. You got Hart coming back, you got Dante Scott coming back, you got Juju Reese coming back. That's the nucleus and also some guys that come in in the transfer portal that you well know, you're well aware of. Yeah, um you know, we only lost one guy to the transfer portal, which was kind of amazing, uh, considering the fact that, you know, what they had gone through all year. Um, our goal as a staff this year was to make sure that the guys that stayed, um, we didn't bring anybody in that was going to not make sure that they had a great year this year. Uh, my goal for this year's team when I got here, understanding what had gone on, um, I wanted to make sure the guys that stayed, stayed loyal to Maryland. Um, were rewarded for staying loyal to Maryland. And we brought guys in to complement those guys that could make sure that those guys have a great year. Uh, and I think the guys we brought in um, fit in nicely with all the guys that were loyal to Maryland. Um, yeah, you know, we, I think the schedule is, um, it's, it's a little bit tougher than probably I should have done, but um, we have enough home games where I think we can get some good momentum. Uh, I'm very similar uh, to Brenda in the fact that, you know, I think we're not going to be really smooth in, in November, early December. I just don't think it's going to be possible, but I'm not worried about that. Uh, I really like what this team, I think, by the time January hits, I think it's, we have veterans, uh, Jameer Young, Don Carey, uh, you talk about Dante and Hakeem, um, you know, we have, we have enough guys that play college basketball at the highest level that I'm not worried that maybe some stumbles early on is not going to derail this. I think mm. that's what I love about this group. They, they're very focused on the end game um, for a new group. I've been, you know, today, uh, you know, this is their last week off. We had Juju, Dante, uh, Don, Jameer, Kalem, and, well, Wiggs. I wish I had Wiggs. Um, they were all in the gym working out. and. On their, own. Yeah. on their own, on their own, very focused on, you know, where where they are now and where they want to go. Well, Coach, this is my 44th year doing Maryland games, football and basketball. I have no chance. Thank you very much. Uh, but I've never felt this kind of excitement among the Maryland base as I have since they announced that you were coming as the basketball coach. Uh, there's always an adjustment period, but these fans are the greatest fans in the country, I think. And all they're looking for is a team that's really competitive, gets to the postseason, and, and, and a coach that reflects their personality, which I know you do. Your players reflect your personality on the floor. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, if you look at you win games, it's not, it's not rocket science. I mean, thank God I don't. It was rocket science. I wouldn't be doing it. Um, you know, you got to defend at a high level. You got to rebound at a high level, and really, to be an elite team, you got to shoot the ball at a high level. Um, you know, that's something that if you look at the you know nine of the last ten national championships <laughs> have ranked in the top five in defending the three point line and shooting the three point. Um, you know, the college game is the, the, the line has gotten bigger. We haven't adapted as much as I think we should. We should make the lane bigger. We should make the line a little. I've changed coaching wise. I, I take a lot from my father. My father was an unbelievable coach. I mean, phenomenal coach. 
Um, I have a lot. Most of my coaching personality is him. I coach very similar to the way he did. Um, my system is very similar to Rick Pitino, um, and to what how Coach Pitino plays. So I'm, I would say I'm a hybrid between Coach Pitino and my father. Uh, and then Jim O'Brien, you know, you know, Jim O'Brien was head coach of Philadelphia in the 76 for a long, long time. Um, he had a big influence on me, but 